Hey fellas, Rambo here with a Dead Ops Arcade 2 video, where I'll be talking about 10 different tips and tricks for the game that you probably didn't know about. Okay, you probably did know about most of these. A lot of the topics that will be discussed in this video will be geared more so towards casual and intermediate level players who might not know every little intricacy about the game, but I'll also try to include some more obscure tips towards the end of the video. Timestamps will be in the description, let's get right into it. Number 1. Speed Boosting on Temple Fortress After completing round 19, you'll enter the Temple Fortress Silverback Challenge, where your goal is to make it to the top so that you could enter into the Room of Fate. There's one tip and one trick that I would suggest for this challenge. The tip is to hook a left as soon as the challenge begins, and go down these steps, which will have boxing gloves and some saw blades to temporarily protect you. The trick is that there's actually a way to make your progression to the top both faster and easier, but you'll need a couple of speed boosts in order to do so. Essentially, you need to stay here at the top of the staircase, and aim your weapon a bit to the right of where this part of the wall starts. And if you use a speed boost, you should then be propelled upwards past an entire level of the fortress. If you do that successfully, there's another area where you could use a speed boost as well, right over here. And you should again aim at a similar spot on the wall as you did before, which will boost you upwards. Sometimes it might take a few attempts, or you might find another sweet spot that works better for you. For example, I also noticed that it's sometimes helpful to build some momentum before using your speed boost, rather than just being stationary when you use the speed boost. The good thing about this trick is that you don't miss out on any of the good drops on the fortress, as the free lives and nukes are at the tippity top rather than the lower levels that you're essentially able to skip. But overall this trick helps cut about one minute from the challenge, and also helps minimize your encounters with the pesky skeletons as you make your way to the top. So I give it a thumbs up. Number 2. Secret Items on Round 25 During the Red and Dead challenge on Round 25, there's actually some hidden goodies that you could collect at the top of the cliff, and even a Fido chicken vehicle floating in the air as well, which you can see the shadow of on the ground. So how do you get these items? At the beginning of round 25, you'll be guaranteed a first person item pickup. Once you pick that up, make your way to the cliff, align yourself towards the middle area of it, and then use a speed boost to propel yourself upwards. There are two different sets of items which will appear up there. You'll either see three nukes and a raps vehicle, or the alternative is that there will just be two nukes. Sometimes you'll try boosting up the cliff and only collect on a couple of the items like the raps vehicle. If such a thing happens, you could also make your way up the cliff with the raps vehicle if you position it correctly. In regards to obtaining the Fido chicken vehicle, here's how you do it. Once you've boosted to the top of the cliff to collect your nukes and stuff, you need to quickly turn around and use a speed boost towards the floating chicken. Sometimes it could be a bit difficult to time correctly, so I wouldn't advise wasting all your boosts trying to do this trick, as it's really not that important. But it is definitely a cool little easter egg. It's worth noting that for the first few months of the game's release, the hidden vehicle floating in the air on this arena was the mech vehicle rather than the chicken vehicle. Number 3. Nuke in the Stone Guardian After completing the 8 Before Fate challenge on round 37, you'll enter the Test of a Nobleman fight with the Stone Guardian. Now, there's actually a little trick you could do before entering the round, which will eliminate some of the orbs protecting the Guardian, along with preventing the meatball in the middle from continuously respawning throughout the boss fight. So, here's how you do it. After being round 37, go through any of the doors, and then use a nuke while the round is transitioning during the black screen. You should use the nuke immediately after hearing this sound cue. Now, the timing of the nuke doesn't have to be exactly perfect. If you're off by a few milliseconds, you might just have a different number of orbs that you manage to eliminate, which isn't really that big of a deal. In terms of getting rid of the meeple for good, the time window of when you should drop the nuke is usually pretty generous. Getting rid of the meeple obviously makes the boss fight easier to survive, and there being less orbs also makes the stone guardian more susceptible to damage, which of course makes the round quicker, and by extension, easier too. It's also worth noting that the Stone Guardian enemy is invulnerable to damage during the first few seconds of the fight. He doesn't actually start taking damage until the yellow text on screen fades away. So if you have a good weapon like the purple shotgun, you should hold off on shooting that weapon until the yellow text disappears. Number 4. Increased Mobility with Skull Power a lot of people of course know that skulls increase both the fire rate and damage of your weapons. But did you know that skulls actually make you move faster as well? Based on some experiments that I did, and it's entirely possible I'm slightly off, but it seems that having a red skull in your HUD will actually increase your player speed by 5%. Similarly, if you have a purple skull in your HUD, it'll increase your speed by 10%. 
This speed increase might not seem like much, but it's definitely very helpful in later rounds when trying to maneuver around the map, especially since the zombies also get faster as the game progresses. It's worth noting, in regard to fates and upgrades, that the Power of Destruction fate gives you permanent Red Skull power, while the Eternal Companionship fate Favor Upgrade and Fury Upgrade all give you permanent Purple Skull Power, so you'll be seeing speed increases with those fates and upgrades that I mentioned. Number 5. Multiple Players Reviving a Downed Teammate A lot of players probably know that you can revive your teammates when they are downed. Stand over their dead body and it will incrementally reduce 4 seconds from their revive timer. However, if you have more than one teammate reviving a downed player, it'll actually make it to where they are revived even quicker. For example, if you have two players standing over a downed body, it'll deduct 5 seconds from the revive timer, rather than just 4 seconds. Likewise, if you add a third player to the mix, it'll subtract 6 seconds from the timer for every second you stand over their body. I don't know how often this would be utilized in a match, as players are usually pretty separated on the map, but if you had a downed teammate you wanted to revive really quickly for whatever reason, just have all the teammates stand over that downed player's body. Number 6. Dog Bites On Dead Ops Arcade 2, the dogs work a little differently as an enemy type when compared to the first game. It only takes 2 dog bites to die on this game. However, dog bites will reset to 0 whenever you enter first person mode and also whenever you enter a new round. Because of these conditions, which are probably unintended, you'll notice that you die a lot less frequently to dogs on this game. Anyways, something also worth mentioning in regard to dogs, if you take one dog bite and then enter first person mode at some point during that same round, you'll notice that you have a slight red screen at the beginning of your first person, which is essentially you starting with one hit already, so definitely be conscious of that and avoid danger. It's also worth noting that for the Xander Wolf challenge in round 53, if you get a first person drop that round, definitely use it to your advantage, because you'll be able to take a total of 6 dog bites before dying while in first person mode, so long as you don't have any red screen at the start of your time in first person. Number 7. Speedy Silverback there's a weird bug that can occur on the boss round if you have your invincibility shield near a silverback spawn point during his spawning animation. For example, the silverback is about to spawn in on round 64, I drop a nuke, the game provides me with a brief invincibility shield since I just used a piece of armory, and then I put my shield in the vicinity of the silverback spawn area, which glitches him out quite a bit. This bug will cause the silverback to have a radically different moveset for the round. No banana bombs, no jetpacking, no boosting. The catch is that the bug will also change his movement patterns, as he alternates between standing completely still, which is helpful, but he'll also run at you sometimes at supersonic speed, which is not so helpful. Grabbing a first person pickup will actually fix this bug with the silverback and cause him to act normal again for the rest of the round. This bug is not exactly super beneficial, as his super speed movement is too difficult to contend with, even with the fast feet, but I think there are specific scenarios where it might be somewhat helpful. Like, if you have a purple shotgun and chicken at the beginning of round 64, and don't want the silverback boosting and jetpacking away from your bullets all the time, then perhaps this could be a strategy that you successfully employ. Number 8. Shadow Boogie Color Pull The Shadow Boogie enemies in DOA are pretty unique, insofar as they're the only enemies that target you based on the character you're playing as. For example, if you're playing a co-op game, Shadow Boogie zombies will target the green player over others if you're all in close proximity. If there's no green player in the match for whatever reason, then the order of priority would be blue, red, yellow. I think it's just a helpful tip to keep in mind, because let's say you're the yellow player in a 4 player match, and you see a Shadow Boogie about to spawn in on the map, you shouldn't panic too much, because that Shadow Boogie is most likely going to target other players before you, unless you're super close to it. Likewise, if you're the green player in co-op, you should fully expect the shadow boogie enemies to target you in many circumstances, and should prepare accordingly, especially on round 17 during the shadow boogie challenge round when there's a bunch of them spawning in at once. Number 9. Meeples increase radius when explosives are involved. There's a weird bug in the game where meeples seem to have increased radius of killing you if you're shooting an explosive weapon in their vicinity. For example, if you have a ray gun equipped, you should avoid pulling some move where you're really close to the meeple while also shooting it. Instead, you should focus on getting some distance away from it before you start shooting it with your explosive weapon. Also, there's a bug where sometimes a meeple could kill you even before it lands on the map completely, which is caused by shooting an explosive weapon under the meeple's little spawn marker. Obviously, there's not much you could do in an instance like that, but that's the explanation for why you would die in such a circumstance. Number 10. Shortening your invincibility shield. The final tip I have is much more of a niche trick, 
something that's more so geared towards high round players. If you take a death on DUA2 and then use a piece of armory immediately afterwards, it'll actually shorten the duration of your invincibility shield, which is typically a detriment and you should avoid doing such a thing, but it could actually be a somewhat helpful tactic in specific circumstances for high round players. Essentially, when a teammate is in a vehicle, that player is guaranteed either nukes or speed boost as their life donation reward if someone ends up stealing your life. So there might be a case that comes up where you know your vehicle is about to expire, but your teammate is still reviving and you want them to take your life before your vehicle expires. Well, then you would have your teammate shorten their shield to ensure that they steal your life while you're inside the vehicle. Again, this is a very specific trick, so it's not that important if you're a casual player. But even if you're a casual player, I think knowing that your shields could sometimes be shortened is still something you should keep in mind. Because sometimes I notice that players accidentally use a piece of armory right after dying, in which case they should be aware that their invincibility ring will wear off far sooner than normal. For comparison, with a normal full shield after dying, it'll take about 10 seconds for your shield to wear off. Whereas with a shortened shield from using armory after respawning, it'll only take 5 seconds for it to wear off. Anyways, that about wraps up the video. Dead Officer K3 will be releasing in November, so expect to see a lot of content for that game on this channel and also on my Twitch channel, which is a Rambo with a zero at the end. Thanks for watching.